do you ever speak to an actor in, in a fitting and tell them to calm down? Or if you say you had a young actor from the theater school who was very, how would you address that? Yes, well, I, I'm, I think you always need to be polite. Um, but I've, I've had to say uh, with a young actor who's straight out of school, um, now you must trust me, you have had no experience at this, and I am very experienced, so I do know what I'm doing. Um, just relax and ask any question you want, but let me, let me do my job. And they, usually, they will usually respond to that, because it's usually insecurity and, and tension that is making them act the way they, they are. But um, usually... Shana McKenna adores you. Oh, really? She well, that's adores nice. I adore you. her, too. <laughs> she's wonderful. So she must have learned, because she's played so much here at the yes. festival, she must have learned to trust well, you, your, yes, your cutting and, and, and your ability. Yes, and I have such admiration for her. I mean, again, that's a two-way street. Of you, you want to do your very best for somebody like that, and uh, no, she's she's just terrific. Fabrics. Are there some fabrics you enjoy that you like better than others? Well, we use a lot of silk in the theater because it lights beautifully on the stage, and it's correct for for say the 18th century, 18th and 19th century. Um, uh, silk is is the correct fabric for well, going even back further, 17th. 17th century, um, and it's lovely to handle. I mean, pure pure silk is, is beautiful to your hand. I mean, it, it feels wonderful. I'm uh, not always the easiest to cut. Um, the hardest things to cut, of course, are the, the floaty fabrics, the chiffons, and you have to pin them down to the table often because somebody walks by and it's going to float away. Um, th those, those can be really difficult. But some of the most beautiful, beautiful fabrics on stage for, for women's clothes are the chiffons and the, the georgettes and the... And, and you always use the fabrics that are uh, from the period? If, if possible, if possible. It's usually the most successful. Um, a lot of fabrics aren't available anymore and, and um, there are so many synthetic fabrics around which um, you often have to substitute for um, for the for the real thing. Which fabrics aren't available? Well, there there are all kinds of fine cottons and things that that don't exist anymore. Um, they're just there's no call for them. There's no need for them. They've been replaced by uh, by synthetics, and uh, that can be that can be difficult. It can be a problem, especially lighting is is a problem with synthetic fabrics on the stage. Why? They they light well. They absorb light in different ways and reflect light in odd ways. Um, the lighting designer, I'm sure, is is certainly knowledgeable about that. And um, we try to keep with with real natural fabrics as much as possible: silk, wool, linen, and cotton. It, for modern clothes, it doesn't matter because modern clothes tend to be made of modern fabrics, uh, synthetics. Right. But it um, What's it the most <coughs> expensive fabric that you've cut? A lot of lace and, and um, re-embroidered fabrics and things are very expensive. I don't know. It's better that I don't know <laughs> what they cost. I mean, is there ever a moment of hesitations when the scissors uh, go yeah, into sometimes. $400 I a think, yard yes, I fabric? Think, Whoa. <laughs> Yes, but you, you know, if that's what the designer has chosen, you just make, must make absolutely sure that you know what you're doing. Have it's you ever cut historic fabrics, like someone who's found a bolt of 19th century fabric that doesn't exist anymore? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Dora Rusty at Opera at Atelier, Opera Atelier? was given a, s a number of bolts of historic fabric from oh you know, someone in the States. Mm -hmm. And it literally was 19th century. And it was oh, fantastic. And she described yes. you know, designing and working with a cutter of cutting fabric that you yes. could never replace. Yes, yes. Well, that must be terrifying. I don't think I've ever had that experience. And is money an object uh, under your scissors? Or um, how does the budget come down and land on your head in a way? Well, um, 
the, the budget doesn't really uh, involve me, is it's more the, the shopper and the, the designer that have to make a choice as to whether they buy something that's $40 a, a meter or $400 a meter. Um, but um, budgets are tighter all the time, of course. They, they, um, they seem to get smaller <laughs> every time we do a show. But uh, you just, uh, as a cutter, you, you, you don't have very much input in, into that. But when the budget gets smaller, how does that affect your work on that costume? Well, um, you often don't have the, the fabric that you really would like to see, but you have to, you have to cope with it anyway. You know, you, you wish you'd had a better quality, for instance, to deal with, but, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a fact of life. I, you just have to deal with that. And the detailing of a costume, does that suffer? It can, yes, it can. And uh, the trim, of course, is often very important. Um, what exactly do you mean by the trim? Well, um, braids, uh, laces, um, uh, appliques, applied, applied things that, um, that are added to just the basic, the basic shape uh, that can actually make or break a costume. Buttons can be terribly important and they can, they can be terribly expensive. Why? Um, well, it's just the... Um, it's just the, the total look. It's really important to have the right sorts of, of buttons. Um, once you achieve the silhouette, um, it's, it's, the audience <coughs> is often more aware of the, the added, the additions, the buttons, the, the braid, the lace, the collar, more than they are of, the, of what you've actually done all your work for, is to achieve the, achieve the silhouette. Because it's a bit like music, right? The structure of music, yes. you don't really hear. That's right. You hear the melody of music, and the yes. melody is a bit like the trim on the outside, but it's the structure of the silhouette yes. of the music or the costume which is really impinging. That's on a very good analogy. What it's you feel very, about. very similar. Yeah, it is. So it's kind of music in three dimensions. Yes. I've heard cutters described as, as a, a sculptor of, fa of fabric. Yes. Yes. That the designer creates a two-dimensional. That's right. And then the cutter takes it and sculpts it in three. That's right. There's a, there's a great deal of artistry involved. There are a lot of things being a cutter. You, the, the, certainly a cutter is an artist, but uh, you also need the, you, you used the word engineering a while ago. That, that's all part. That's, that's more craft. The, the engineering part is, is craft. The, um, the psychology of dealing with the, the, the bodies that you're putting, putting them on, the psychology of working with the people who are doing the construction for you. There's a great deal, great deal of skill involved in the whole process. Let's talk about directors and designers. Okay. You worked with Laurence Olivier as a director. Yes, I did. And I went to England um, in um, 1962. Uh, actually, it was 1963 when I, when I worked with Olivier. I, I cut a show at this, the Chichester Festival where he was, he was the director um, of St. Joan. And um, I was doing men's men's costumes on that. And um, he's a, he was the artistic director at the, the um, um, at Chichester. And then I went, I kind of moved with the whole company into London and did the, the initial production for the National Theatre of Great Britain, which was what he, he started. The initial production? Yes, the with Hamlet. We did. Who played Hamlet? Peter O'Toole. You cut Peter O'Toole's costume? I didn't know. I didn't cut, cut his costume. But I shared some fish and chips with him one day. And what was that like <laughs> to share fish and chips with Peter O'Toole? Well, he came in early for a fitting, not with me, but for some, with somebody else. He sat down at the outside of my table, and, and it was lunchtime. He opened up these, you know, the way they have them in newspapers. 
And I said, oh my, that smells good. And he said, are you hungry? And I said, yes, I am. And so he came around, he said, will you share this with me? So he came around to my side of the table and we shared his fish and chips. But I, um, that was an interesting production. Olivier directed that. Um, what was it like to meet, did you meet Laurence Olivier? Yes, I did. I met him at Chichester. And um, it's, uh, it's very intimidating to come face to face with an idol, somebody you've idolized for years. And I had. I had written letters as a, well, those old 30s films he was in are just so romantic and so wonderful. And um, so you written it was him extreme. fan letters? I had written him fan letters. And I wrote him a letter after I first saw Henry V. And um, that kind of changed my life. That was a marvelous. The film At the of time, Henry the, the film of Henry V yeah. was so wonderful. And um, I, don't, I know it was, I was only about 12, 13, 13, I guess, when I first saw that. So what was it like when you actually met him? He's the, the only person I've ever met that reduces me to speechlessness. I didn't know. The only know person? I think so. Just about the only one. I couldn't speak. I didn't know what to say. And I had an, the first encounter was just, I'll, well, I'll never forget it. We were working in an old pub in Chichester. We were in the, the wardrobe was in the ballroom. And the, the actors rehearsed downstairs, and there was a little kitchen where we, we all fixed our lunches. And I had been in this little kitchen um, fixing my lunch. And I came back to the wardrobe. My, why my hands are wet, I don't know. My hands are wet. I stopped dead in the, the doorway of the wardrobe, because Olivier was standing at my table looking at one of my books. And as I stopped, he looked up, and this, we had just started, and he came straight toward me with his hand out and saying, how do you do? I'm Laurence Olivier. Well, I nearly fell on the floor, and I said, my hands are wet, because he wanted to, to shake my hand. And he said, it's all right, dear. Well, that just finished me. I mean, what do you say? You're looking at this man that you've idolized for years. And um, that, well, that was the first time.